When we consider local spatial order correlation, we take a similar conceptual approach as when we do global spatial order correlation, but we're zooming in. We're considering a much finer grain scale and we're looking for slightly different types of patterns. Let's look at what exactly we're looking at, what exactly we can find, and how we can implement these with real world data. Local space auto correlation, remember, is all about finding clusters. It's about finding, in other words, what we can call pockets of spatial heterogene instability or spatial heterogeneity. These are parts of a map in which there is a very marked pattern where, where the association between values and location is particularly clear. And in other words, we can say that really local spatial order correlation is about finding portions of a map where values are correlated in a particularly strong and specific way. And there's a big difference between trying to find clusters and trying to assess the degree of clustering of a map. Remember, with them, with global space lot of correlation, we're trying to summarize an entire map, an entire pattern, into a single value. Ultimately, it boils down to distilling the entire pattern into a single value and then maybe a measure of significance if we do inference. With local space a lot of correlation, there's no summary. In fact, there is augmentation. What we're trying to do is finding out more and exploring further, augmenting the data that we have by applying statistics. And in practical terms, this is also going to mean that instead of having a single test for the pattern, what we're going to have is test for every observation, but we'll see this in a second. Before that, let's look into the types of local space auto correlation that we can run into. The first one is what we will call the high high class. This is an area where there is a, fo a focus, a foci, or an observation, a polygon, with high values, surrounded by high values as well. And we're also going to, you might run into this in the literature under the term hotspots. And this is a case of positive local space auto correlation. It's local because we're looking at a part of, at a section of the map, not at the entire map. And it's positive, not because it has high values, but because it has the same type of values being located in the same way, in this case, high. But just as much would be the low, low case, where we have low values surrounded by low values. And this is, again, another example of local positive space auto of correlation. And you might also see this referred to in the literature as cold spots. Then the other case we can find is what we will call high-low. And this is areas of the map where you have a an area, a section that is high value of high values surrounded by low values. And we will call these spatial outliers. And the opposite case of spatial outliers is where we have a, an area of low values surrounded by high values. This is another instance of spatial outliers. And sometimes you might see these referred to informally as a donut because you have high values surrounding uh, like an empty space or of low values. Now, this is the typology of local space a lot of correlation we can find. Let's look at how a one way, and this is the one we will cover in this course, of how you can measure and how you can operationalize the idea of local space a lot of correlation with your own data. And for these, we're going to consider something called LISAs, or Local Indicators of Spatial Association, which is an idea put forward by Luke Anselin in, in the mid-90s. And you can find the reference for the original article in the course website. LISAs are to local spatial order correlation pretty much what Moransi is to global spatial order correlation. In fact, LISAs is not a except, sorry, that LISAS is not a single statistic, it's a family of statistics. However, the one that we're going to see in this course 
is the local version of Moran's eye. So lasers are st statistical tests to detect spatial clusters or sections of the map with particular uh, patterns and where we can also get a statistical significance through inference. And the inference is going to be very similar to how we would perform inference in the, um, in the global case. Now, the important thing to note here, which I alluded a couple of slides ago, is that unlike with Moran's eye, where you take an entire map and you summarize it into a single value, or maybe two, with LISAs, you take an entire map and you don't summarize it. You run a test, kind of like you would do with Moran's eye, but for every single observation. And what you're looking for every single observation in your data set is to what extent the relationship between the value of that observation and its neighbors, operationalized by the spatial lag, is a departure from what you would expect in the overall map. So, in other words, given the general trend of spatial error correlation or spatial clustering, the LISAs tell us something about how the individual case for every observation is different from, from the general trend. 